If you've been following along in our world building project here, we have figured out what fascinates us, what it is about that that makes it so interesting, and what our story is going to be about. We have drawn a circle around the entity being transformed and discovered the scourge and the holdfast, and the value being pursued. We found our hero and our marvelous elements. We have started laying out the various aspects of the creative unconscious. And just last time, we talked about spreading out the history of our world, how it got to be where it is, and where it is going. Today, we're going to talk about the last part in our overview of world building before we get into the nitty gritty, choosing our story focus on this episode of Project Shadow. Hello everyone, how are you doing today? My name is Charlie, and you might know me better as sci-fi fantasy writer C.E. Dorset. and on today's episode, we are going to be talking about our story focus. Yes, finally, finally, we're going to be talking about what we're actually going to be writing. And yeah, it takes until this point. It's one of the last things that we do, but it's not the end of world building. But before we get into all that, if you haven't already, please do take a moment to rate this podcast and whatever app you're listening to me on. It does help out a lot, and if the app doesn't allow you to rate maybe consider sharing it with some people that you think would like it. That helps out more than you know. If you are new to the podcast, you can either go back to the previous episodes and get caught up, or I have created a playlist over on Spotify that has the entire series in there. All right, here we go. So the story focus is where our story is going to take place. What we've been doing, and what I've been trying to stress episode by episode throughout this process, is building the world. Building the story world in which our tale is going to take place. Now, admittedly, not every kind of story requires this much world building. But a lot of them could use it. And honestly, if you're doing a story that takes place in the real world, It's good to go through this process to make sure that you have done all the research you need to ensure that you know everything you need to know in order to tell your story. So whether this is going to be the outline that you fill in for your research, or it's going to be the outlet for your creativity to build a strange and magical new world, either way, it's important to do these steps. I'm not going to say necessary, because, well, this is one method, and there are a lot of methods out there. This one just happens to be my favorite. So what is the story focus? The story focus is where in our series of events is our story taking place? Now, for a lot of st- a lot of mainstream stories, because they don't go through the effort of making these kinds of elaborate story models in their world building, I can't really pinpoint many of the examples that we've used before. I've used a lot of Star Wars examples, and Star Wars does fit this very well, and each movie would then be a dot in our downward spiral and upward spiral like we've talked about before. But because those films, for the most part, are telling the background story of the model, they're harder to pin down. Now, Rogue One on the other hand, is a very good example of a story focus, and probably one of the reasons why it is one of the better films to come out since Disney bought Star Wars. Rogue One takes place in the middle of a series of events that we know. It's in the grave period between Revenge of the Sith and A New Hope. And thanks to the crawl at the beginning of A New Hope, we have a rough idea of what happens. That crawl, by the way, those crawls that you see there, a good way to think about those is that's the summary of what is happening in the upside or downside of the passage 
in the rest of the world that we've been wor working on designing. When the cam the crawl goes away and the camera swoops down, that's when we get into our story focus. Rogue One fits right at the cusp between these two cycles. It is the catalyst that sets everything in motion for the original trilogy and quite seriously the end of the prequel era. It, it, it fits right there on the edge and does a job, its job fairly well. One of the reasons that it's important to do all of the work that we've done up to this point is that many stories suffer because they picked the wrong story focus, and thus the stories themselves fell flat. Again, continuing with Star Wars, as we have discussed previously, they didn't work out the downside of the passage. They didn't work out what happened in too much detail between Return of the Jedi and The Force Awakens. And so they let people have a free-for-all for it. They just put a dot on a blank cycle and said, our story begins here. Things are already kind of bad-ish. And we have to fit it. If you actually pay attention to the story that they told in the movies, and I'm restricting this to the movies, I understand the comics and the books, because tell more, and I've been reading the books and some of the comics, so I, I, I know that. But I want us to focus just on the movies here for a moment. The movies themselves, because we did not get any of the story of the fall, what happened between the fall of the Empire and the rise of the First Order, we actually see this bifurcated half in the rise of, um, I'm sorry, in The Force Awakens and the other half in The Last Jedi. The Last Jedi actually ends at the very end of our downward cycle. And there's this odd overlap here because we are witnessing the rise of our heroes in Finn, Poe, Rey, and the like. At the same time, we're watching the apotheosis, the deification, the fall of our ultimate anti-hero, Ben, Ken <laughs> ben Kenobi, Ben Solo, into Kylo Ren. But they didn't really think it through, and so he's actually the secret hero who gets saved or something? Sorry if there's spoilers for you, but it's been out for a while and everybody's been complaining about it, so I figure everybody knows. I'm sorry, I should have I should have warned. But yeah, it, it, it the reason the sequ sequel trilogy feels as mishmashed as it is, is because they didn't take the time to at least work out. Now they didn't have to tell the story of what happened. They only needed to tell us in the, in the crawl the barest bit of information. In When the original series came out, George Lucas had written a document that was called The Journal of the Wills, and this was going to be the title of the original sto story. You can actually find a copy of this in the novelization of A New Hope. At the very beginning, there's a snippet from The Journal of the Wills, the original story, which basically tells a prettified version of how Palpatine came to power and how darkness took over the Empire, how the Empire came to be in the state of misfortune that it's in. George Lucas had already worked that out. So when we open in media res, he had an idea of how they had gotten there. That's why we have spent all this time building up our model. Picking where your story takes place within it, that's important. Pick, pick somewhere that's interesting, that it's exciting, that is the story that you want to tell. You should have, if you've been doing this on a grander scale, been able to find multiple stories that you could tell, or multiple ideas for stories that you could tell in this world, which makes this an ideal process when you just have kind of I'd like to tell a story about this, but you don't have details. This is a great way to world build something to get you to a story. One of the things that I use it for quite often is I'll have a nifty idea and I'll feed it through the system to build a world and then go, oh, there's my story and tell that one. 
So now that we've figured out where in our history we're going to set our story, now it's time to actually build it out. And this is going to take a lot of the elements that you're used to from other, you know, creative writing experiments. This could be your Save the Cat. This could be your Anatomy of a Story. All of that, That's this is where that process actually first starts coming in. But we are going to be looking at some specific elements first before we let it get over there. All right? So the basic components of our story focus are going to be what we're going to call the inciting action, the principal action, the exposition, and the afterthought. All of which we should be able to glean from the world building that we've done so far. Our inciting action will tell us what the problem is that our focus is about. Remember how I said this is cycles within cycles? So what is our problem? What is the problem that our heroes and our story are going to be facing? The principal action is how they're going to resolve that. How are they going to deal with it? What is the method that they are going to use to get there? The exposition tells us everything that we need to know about what led to this moment and everything that will be relevant for telling the story. And the afterthought will tell us, well, what happens after this? What is its effect on the rest of the story? And this is how we tell the story to ourselves over and over again. The reason we're pulling out these four elements is we'll often find either the principal action or the inciting action on the model that we just created. One of the events that's either alluded to or discussed in the downside of the passage or the upside of the passage will be the one that we want to focus on. And it will be either our inciting or principal action. At that point, we will start working and looking into it to see how we can build it out and how we can make it into a story in its own right. How do we do this? We do this by applying the solution formula. What is the solution formula, you ask? Well, I have a problem. Here are the obstacles that I'll have to overcome to fix the problem. So here's what I have to do then to fix it. It's very simple, basic storytelling. We are also, at this point, going to be putting in all of our genre structures. What are the things that are expected? Oh, we're writing a space opera, so we need to make sure that they're in a ship. We need to figure out exactly how many worlds they're going to be visiting, if any. Is it all going to be taking place in space or on a space station? Or how's all that going to work? And here's where we start pulling out all of our favorite structures for how we're going to tell the story. Be it the universal structure of we try something, it fails, we figure out why it failed, we figure out what we're going to do, we try something else. That's the universal version of every story. Or, again, this is where we pull in our Save the Cats, our Anatomy of a Story, whatever model you like using. However, you, your three-act structure, your five-act structure, however it is you like to tell your story. That all comes in here. But notice, you're also building a list of further things that need world building. That's why I said, don't get bogged down in the steps that we've led to pre before here. We need to have a good understanding of the world by the time we get to this point. But when we reach this point, we start seeing what we need the world to have. So for example, in the story that I'm currently working on, my princess rescue squad, which still makes me giggle and laugh and smile every time I say that, I knew I wanted this to take place in a secondary world. So I did what I love to do, and I created a world map. There it is. It's a world map. I don't have any mountains or rivers and not really any lakes or anything like that in there. But I have a basic idea of what I want the continents to look like and how I want the world to be laid out. Because that's an aesthetic thing for me, and I don't like... I, I like having that done. It doesn't have any countries on it. Because that would have bogged me down. What countries have to be on this map? How many countries need to be on this map? Where should the countries be? And what's each one's individual history? 
I don't need to know that. I don't. That's not necessary for the story focus. Now, there were two things that were part of the world building that did kind of require me to put them on the map, and one was deciding whether or not Oz is going to be on my map. Is Oz a country in this fairy tale world or not? And the other question that I needed to answer for myself was, well, this is going to be a fairy tale land. This is a fairy tale world. Is it going to be a flat world like Discworld? Is it going to be a heliocentric world? Is it going to be a geocentric world? And I made my decisions, and I have story reasons for each of those. And one of them might impact the current story that I'm telling. I'm not 100% on that, but I, I'm fairly certain that it will. And then I decided which princess I wanted to tell their story first, because I'm going to have to retell all of these stories. So I picked my story focus. Okay, so I know the princesses are going to be brought in in a, in a rough order. So this is the one I'm starting with. My, my Snow Queen, my version of the Snow Queen. So as I start building out her story, characters start coming in. Okay, so I need to have this character and that character, and oh, I need to have the land that she's from. And so I pull out my map, and I name the country that she's on, and I put it on the map. And now the world is being built. And that's the power of this version of world building. It is really, really easy to get lost in the process of world building and just build for the sake of world building. And there is nothing wrong with that. World building can be one of the greatest joys that we encounter in the creative life. And if that's what you want to do, more power to you. I, I keep trying to give myself the courage to do that because I have a couple ideas that I think that's all they're going to be. But I keep telling myself that I have to produce a novel or at least some form of story that's, you know, more concrete than just the world building. So I haven't let myself go there yet. Maybe one day. But as we're generating each and every aspect of these worlds, of these stories, we start seeing more and more things that need to be developed. Oh, if that character is going to be in there, well, they are the king of this land. Well, what's the history of that land? How did they come to be in charge? Oh, here are some of the other people that work in the royal court there. Well, what are their stories? Where did they come from? And now my world building is both fleshing out the world and able to build upon all of the things that I've previously done, and it's laser-focused in creating the things that I need for the story that I'm doing. That's why we went through all of the high concept before, so we could get to this point where we're actually creating our story focus, which is the book, the novella, the novelette, the short story, whatever it is that you're going to be telling. We know enough to fit these pieces into that greater story and make it work. We're not coming in blind. We're not coming in lost. And we're not getting distracted by creating a whole bunch of things that we're never, ever, 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 ever going to use. And again, there's nothing wrong with that. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. So I hope that this methodology is helpful to you. It's one that I have liked and used over the years, and it's one that I continue to use. Now, if you're one of those who have been contacting me saying that you want more specifics, that's what we're going into next. Our next series will be World Building 201, and we're going to be getting into some of the nitty gritties, how to build a world history, how to build a society, how to build a culture. And we're going to dig into all of that. So if you have any questions, comments, or topics you'd like to hear discussed on the show, please do let me know. In the show notes, you'll find a link to the voice message system. Keep it short. Keep it clean. I would love to hear from you. You can also hit me up on Twitter or Instagram. I'm C. Dorset on both. And you can find links to everything that I do over at projectshadow.com. Your questions are very important because... I will, for the most part, be giving some book recommendations for some of the broader topics or some YouTube channels and podcasts and the like, because I could go into how to actually 
physically construct a world, but Artifexian has done such a good job with that. You should just watch his videos. <laughs> you know, I would just basically be summarizing his work. But I am going to be taking time to guide you through some of the other things that I think I can add value to. And I'm, I've been doing this for a very long time, and I might miss some of the things that you are interested in. And that's why sharing your opinions and your questions with me is really helpful. So that this is the most helpful resource it can be for you so that you can get the best story out of it possible. All right. Oh, this has been a lot. Thank you all for listening. I am so glad that this went over as well as it did with you all. I, I was concerned about kind of focusing in the way I did, but you know, I think right now with all of us looking for things to fill our days with, well, world building is a great way to do that. Like I said, I'm going to be doing some stuff with World Anvil and well, not necessarily with them. Uh, Janet said that I can contact her if I need some help, which is awesome. But I will be building some stuff up on World Anvil to share with you. So if you have any questions about any of their features, you can also let me know about that as well. Okay. All right. I guess that's it. If you have a dollar, you can pass my way. Oh, hear the weed eater. Somebody's working. If you have a dollar, you can pass my way down in the show notes. You'll find a link to both the listener support and my Patreon. Thank you to everybody who does that. It means the world to me. If you don't have any money right now, it is completely 100% understandable and okay. But if you know anybody you think would like anything that I do, please share it with them. All right. Until next time, please stay safe, stay well, and don't forget to have the fun. Bye.